Hey guys, so we are back. We are back. Let me, let me tell y'all some. This season is like, okay, so it's a lot of fuck shit going on, but of course, we just gonna get right into it because that's just how it is. So, we pick up where we left off from the season, you know, with Carlotta and Cassie's, you know, gun standoff. You know, they practically forcing each other, you know, to shoot each other off. You know, you shoot me, no, you shoot, and all this other stuff. So, they get into a big scuffle and end up shooting the mama. And the way... (laughs) Bitch, the way how the mama was laying on the floor, she's like... So, so it's like, y'all just gonna see him? Y'all just gonna say they look stupid or are you gonna call the police? I said, what the fuck? She said that shit so casually. So at the hospital, like, everybody is over there and the mom is practically, like, sick and tired of Cassie and Carlotta fighting because of shit that happened in the past. So they need to pretty much get it the fuck together and just get the fuck over. And I'm sitting here like, you know what, I agree with you. They really do need to get over it because, bitch, it's in the past. Like, let it go. So, at that point, we get into the shop. The shop is redecorated. Everything is all modified and brand new and shit. Everybody's having a good time. Everyone's looking great, especially Cotton, you know, who just came back from New York and anything, who, you know, had to get update that she met up with this guy named Mateo, who ends up becoming this social media mongol that is planning to do some fuck shit later, but we'll get into that. So, meanwhile, we get Carlotta, and Carlotta is still working on getting all the girls together since this is the first time that they're going to be seeing each other. This is the first time that, you know, yeah, they're going to be seeing each other since Star's coming back home from her tour. Alex is going to be coming back from her recovery with the whole plane thing and her having to deal with all these solo endorsements and all this other shit and Simone, you know, coming home from wherever the fuck she went. And we find out that, of course, Alex was on the plane and that she pretty much survived the crash and now she's out here popping. Then we see Star, who is just randomly pregnant and she can't wait to see and meet her baby and shit. And all I'm thinking is, who the fuck is the damn daddy? Like, who are you guys, like, who the fuck do you guys think is the daddy? Because... This bitch done fucked every nigga up from motherfucking... Like, she done fucked every dick in Atlanta. Like, up, down, left, right, north, east, southwest, bitch. Like, this bitch done went everywhere. Like, she got loose. That bitch traveled. (laughs) So, you know, at the interview, things... Are starting to set up. Carlotta is trying to set Star up so that she can be able to see, you know, Alex and Simone for the first time. And of course, there's some shade thrown when Simone shows up first. And I'm sitting here like, Simone, what is your problem? Because at the end of the day, you feel like that Star betrayed you, but bitch, at the end of the day, she didn't even do anything to you, so I'm trying to figure out where the animosity is coming from from your end, because who the fuck are you to sit here to try to come up on, on Star about something that happened last, or or in the show's case, a few months ago, I bitch, let that shit go. So then we get to um Alex, who is backstage, you know, dealing with some of the um post-traumatic stress that she's dealing with from the plane crash, and we get some flashbacks of her, of, you know, how it happened and what she was going through, you know, beforehand and shit like that. And it's a scary thing to to deal with because I don't fucking blame her. Like, I don't, I don't blame Alex when it comes to her fear with flying because, bitch, I have the exact same fear too. I ain't no flying, bitch. Bitch, I like to stay on the motherfucking ground, okay? I, the last... Plane ride I went on was last year in April when I was coming home from Jersey. And, bitch, 
All I can say is, even though the ride was cute, and it was nice and everything, and the atmosphere and everything was beautiful, girl, how about, I was, I was sitting on the, on the, on the window seat, I guess one of the pieces from the wings looked like that they was loose. Oh, it's lightning. Child, it's raining. But yeah, the piece, the piece from the wing was loose. I'm saying, what the fuck? What is this? Oh, hell no. So yeah, I understand. It's, it's scary, but you'll get through it. So they all meet, and they're all still mad as shit. And I'm like, girl, let it the fuck go. Okay? So, at this point, we get a glimpse of the next of the music video that they came out with for their next album. And, you know, it was cute or whatever. So, at the interview, the interviewer pretty much tried, you know, she, the bitch pretty much tried it. Because she tried to talk about whether or not Star is going to be coming up with some new solo material right in front of Alex and Simone. And I'm sitting here like, okay, well, even though you tried it, oh, my shit is itchy. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. But, um, even though, bitch, you tried it, it's understandable because, you know, Star is the solo artist by now, and her music is, is popping. But, Star pretty much had to deny those allegations to say that she ain't gonna be making no, no solo music just yet. Then they also made the announcement that the girl group is breaking up. I said, girl, whatever. We all know that y'all ain't gonna be broke up forever. That shit ain't gonna last long. Otherwise, it ain't gonna be no show. It ain't gonna be Star Without Take 3. Like, come on, let's be real here. So, the girls get confronted by Carlotta, and they're not here for her pep talks anymore. And when Simone mentions Angel, I said, why? Why is he still here? Why did y'all not write his ass out? He is so irrelevant at this point. Why is this bitch still here? Ugh. So Alex and Simone leaves, and I'm like, whatever. Go. So we find out that Alex and Derek are still together because, you know, they're planning on, on moving in together in a new location that they found. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. That looks forever, bitch. <laughs> and, you know, Dallas, you know, um, Dallas, Derek tried to get some camera time by asking for a pic with her and him real quick, but she ain't falling for it. So they get into this deep conversation about how, you know, Alex still is worried about flying due to the plane crash, which is understandable because she's worried about him driving due to his incident. And I'm sitting here like, oh. Y'all bonding over fucked up situations. It's messed up, but that's cute. That's cute. So in comes Ruby coming in for dinner. And I'm like, you know what? I like Ruby. She is funny as hell. And she is a fierce ass woman. I like this bitch. And then we get another quick flashback from Alex. Where we see that before the crash, she met this other passenger named Bianca, who is pretty much this crazy-ass fan. Now, I'm seeing that girl, oh, it just wouldn't be me. It just wouldn't be me. So then, you know, Simone returns to the salon, and her, Miss Bruce, and Cotton, you know, they re reminisce about the things that they've gone through together. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is cute. So we're getting up with, no so we're catching up with Noah. We find out that, you know, he didn't fall off the the um the roof and shit like that. And I'm like, I kind of knew that he wouldn't do that because, bitch, Noah is very relevant on this show. So, of course, they ain't going to write his ass out because he is an important character. And he's more relevant than Angel and Andy. So, it is what it is. So, we also find out that he's working on, you know, getting off of his addiction and he thanks Star for, you know, helping him get out of it. And then we get Joyce, a.k.a. Tiana Taylor, coming in. Happy to see Noah back on her tour. You know, since they're both headlining for a joint tour together. And 
Star and Joyce argue over, you know, the whole thing with Star opening up for them and how Joyce feels like that she needs to back down since, you know, she only got one hit, so she don't feel like that because she only got one hit single that she shouldn't be a major star and that she doesn't deserve the recognition that she needs. Granted, I understand where you're coming from, Joyce, but at the end of the day, like, you can't sit here and stop or get mad at somebody's hustle or somebody's grind because if it was me, I would have been happy that they would have been, that they would have been open up for me because that just shows that, you know, they're, they're doing their own thing. So it is what it is. So yeah, they're going back and forth, and I'm like, Star, you better stop, because Tiana Taylor, look like she really will fuck you up, bitch. Don't do it. Don't do it, boo-boo. So Carlotta meets up with Mateo for, you know, confirming that she's, you know, still trying to keep the business together, and he lets her know that um, that Midtown is about to go out of business since, you know, Carlotta is barely handling all of the things that's going on with the business because of all the drama and all this other stuff. And Carlotta has to let him know that she just needs time to show him that she can keep the business going. I'm like, girl, okay, whatever you gotta do. So at the club... Simone and Alex are drinking their asses off, talking shit about how much they hate Star. And I'm like, get the fuck over it. Like, at the end of the day, Alex, you can't sit here and still be mad at Star for what the fuck happened. Because at the end of the day, let's not forget, you were the one who decided to leave out on your own fucking performance with Noah. So that was a missed opportunity from your ass since you... You decided to be late because you had some some other thing going on in L.A. which conflicted with your schedule, with your performance with Noah. So Star had to fill in on your on your watch and your position and the fact that you were the one who had to go in and do some solo shit behind the group's back while Star was the one trying to keep y'all asses together. And Simone, shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. Because I don't even know why your ass is even mad. I don't even know why your ass is even mad. So, bitch, shut up. Shut up. So, they admit that, you know, even though they hate Star, they still miss her. And I'm like, flip-flop, bitches. And then, Bianca comes up out of nowhere, and this triggers Alex over another flashback and we get to see a glimpse of what happened with um, her and Bianca before the crash. And I'm sitting here like, okay, well, this is this is different. So Alex leaves and Simone, you know, stays behind and she starts drinking more. And later she goes and decides to call Angel. And Angel is clearly jealous and it is feelings because he's, you know... He, of course, got deported and shit like that, so he's not really happy with how he's living. So we already know that he's in his feelings about that, about um, Simone's success and shit, which makes Simone feel guilty that this had to happen. And I'm like, boo-boo, you should have known. You should have known. So then this girl comes in arguing with her husband and... Her and Simone end up bonding over, you know, their issues with their men. And they decided to go out together. And I'm sitting here like, oh, so is this a potential Karen replacement? Not really, because the next morning, bitch, Simone waking up in bed next to her. And I'm sitting here like, ooh. Simone, you a hoe. <laughs> Simone, you all. <laughs> anywho, anywho. So then Alex picks her up, and Alex was pissed with Simone leaving her alone, which I I already knew that it had something to do with the simple fact that it was connected to the plane crash because we get another flashback to after the crash that we find out that um, the rescue team came in and took um, Alex away from 
from Bianca, who is badly injured. So from there, she kind of felt as if that she abandoned Bianca at that moment, which caused the trigger for how she feels that she now abandoned Samoa and why she ended up going through, you know, her night of female empowerment. <laughs> so anywho, Star is trying to get her album out, trying to save time for the tour with Noah and herself. And Carlotta is pretty much not here for her shit. Carlotta figures out that, you know, Star pretty much misses Simone and Alex and all that other stuff. Hmm. Child, I'm tired. But, um, bear with me, y'all. I'm going to get through this. And all this other stuff. And I'm sitting there like, okay, well, that's cute. Go ahead and put that bitch in her place if you need to. So from there, like, she assures her that, you know, things will work out fine and that she's going to help her out. So later she makes the public announcement that she is already having settlements with the with the tour having a 10-year deal. And from there she'll be able to make $3 million off with the business to help keep it going and to show off Mateo. Backstage, Star and Joyce are arguing over Star's attitude about the whole situation with her opening up and... Joyce pretty much forcing her to back down and kiss the ring. Otherwise, there's going to be consequences. And from there, when Carlotta introduces both Noah and Star on stage, Joyce storms in with a gun threatening Star to fall back. And at this point, and I'm like, see, this is where you fuck Carlotta up. Because now you did this in front of everybody. All the business shares and all the investors and Mateo in front of every damn body. And now you putting everyone at risk. So Carlotta is mad that Star ruined the 10-year touring deal to help make the company make money to keep it, you know, going. And at that point, Carlotta is over the whole thing since Mateo said that, you know, he will make the announcement that Midtown is shut down. So at this point, Carlotta is really down on her fucking luck and I'm sitting here like damn that's fucked up so meanwhile we get this quick little scene with Derek you know bonding with Ruby and and him telling her how much you know he loves her and all that other stuff and you know they bond in and you know they dance into some old school music and I'm sitting there like well oh like that's I like that. That's 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 the type of bond. That's the type of family bond that I like seeing. Like that's some cute shit. I like that. I like that. So from there, like, um, at the shop, Cassie and their mom comes in to fix things up between the girls, and Cassie had to let Carlotta know that she had to face her demons and you know face the consequences of her actions. So they tried to talk it out. And Cassie pretty much tells Carlotta that she practically raised her and, you know, how much she felt that, you know, she let, she felt as if that she let her heel down and stuff, you know, trying to sweet talk her way into getting Carlotta to kind of, you know, give in to their bullshit and all this other stuff. And I'm sitting here like, ooh, girl, we already know Carlotta ain't here for that shit because we all know that. Cassie always likes to make things about herself. And that's when Carla was like, you know what? It's always about you and what people think of you. Yes, I have a business to run myself. And you know, and you know what? You thirsty, 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 reckless, and you nothing. I can't believe that you would even say that to me. We're supposed to be a family. <laughs> you know the difference between me and you? I don't need this to give respect. I'm saying that, girl. Carlotta, you better put that dumb bitch in her place. So all the girls meet up, you know, once more. And Star forces all of them to talk. And Star has to let them know that Carlotta is being sold off. Here comes Alex talking about some... Oh, really? Are you here to help her or to help yourself? Because if you save the company, 
you saved the deal. I said, Alex, shut the fuck up. Because you're really getting on my nerves right now. You're really getting on my nerves right now. Like, get the fuck over it, bitch. And Star had to let them know that they need to save the woman who picked up three broke hosts from Atlanta to help become complete superstars. And I'm sitting here like, yes, Star, you better do that shit. You better remind these dumb bitches who are clearly in their motherfucking feelings that they need to get the fuck over it, grow the hell up, and come together to help the woman that helped make y'all asses relevant. Bitch. So from there, Carlotta decides to fight back and confront Mateo. So she has to let them know that, so she has to let him know that, you know, he needs to have a fan base to help build a business or to help grow the business. And I'm saying, like, well, that's cool. That's cute. Then we find out the girls actually came together to perform to show off Mateo to help build money from the fan base, which is a smart business idea. Their performance is cute, and you know they always they always be coming through with their performances. Like that's the one thing that that's the one thing that I feel like really makes this show stand out is the fact that their music is so it's so raw and real and just it it's cute and it slays every time. It slays every time. I like it. So of course the performance was a success, and you know the girls had to promote the track through Carlotta, and Carlotta had to go in ahead and make the full announcement that Midtown is officially shut down, so that we can make room for a new company called Gravity Records. And I'm sitting here like, bitch, that's how you do it. That is how you fucking do it. That is how you do it. So Mateo was shook out of his mind and that he had to come in and give in to the success and find out and he decided to go on ahead and allow the business to come through and he invited his wife on the stage. Come to find out that his wife was the same bitch that Simone fucked. I said fuck. Like, see, th this is this is something... That always happens to the girls and they wonder why they always fall short because they always do stupid shit. Like, what the hell? So, you know, Mateo was impressed by Carlotta's, you know, move and he's like, so you always know how to play around with the playground. Oh, so you want to see what else I got in the playground? You want to be able to come see what else I got to do to help make some money? Stay on the swings. Okay, you got seven months. Give me six. So there we go. So then we get a quick scene with Noah and Miss Bruce and how they bonding over their little thing over how Noah is upset that, you know, the tourists, since Midtown is, you know, plugged off and shit like that, that means that the tour is canceled and that he has to start over. Meaning that he's so depressed that he might get worried that he might end up getting back into drinking. So Miss Bruce had to confront him and let him know what stopped him from falling off the roof. And that's when we find out in the flashback that his daddy came through and he pretty much had to let him know that he felt disappointed and disgusted that his own son was acting like a weak-ass bitch because he allowed something so small to get to him in a major way. And see, that's what I don't fuck with. I don't fuck with fathers who disrespect their sons like that. And I would know, but I ain't gonna get to that because, you know, it's just, it's a lot. But I understand how Noah feels not having a daddy, you know, really support you and all this other shit and having to feel like that he, you know, is disappointed in you and at times and other stuff. But it's like, damn, you don't do that to your son, bitch. You don't do that to your son. But whatever. So Ms. Bruce kind of had to, you know, help him keep off the alcohol, you know, since he's already in his depression. And I'm so like, well, that's cute. That's what friends are for. I like that. So... I'm sorry, I'm looking up something real quick. But, um, anywho, so yeah, um, so Mateo is pretty much planning to celebrate the announcement by having a crazy foursome with two other stripper hoes. And of course, his wife decided to back down from the situation because she already got her own piece earlier with Simone. Mm hmm. 
freaky ass bitch. Speaking of bitches, we get Cassie meeting up with Maurice, and we clearly see that both of them are in their feelings because... They both got told off and caught up by they fuck shit with Carlotta. So at that point, they decided that they was just going to go right on ahead and just plan some type of scheme to get back at Carlotta because they got caught up on they fuck shit. I said, girl, get over it. Get over it. It's like the grown baby club. So, we get a scene where, you know, Carlotta is pretty much proud of the girls, you know, for them coming together and all this other stuff. And, you know, she had to let them know that at the end of the day, no matter how much they want to say that they broke up, they're still under contract for another six months. So, they have six months to come up with another album before they can be free to do whatever the fuck they want to do. So, of course, Alex and Simone get in their feelings, but... They finally come out of their fuck shit and decide to admit that, okay, so I guess we actually, you know, we miss Star and we miss the family. And then we get Simone who admits that she wants a divorce from Angel. I'm like, oh, thank you. Simone, you better fall through with this plan because, bitch, if I find out in the late, later on this season that your ass decided to go back with that fuck nigga, I'm a, I'm a lily crawl, I'm a lily crawl across this TV screen and fuck you with my damn self. And then Star tells everybody that she's pregnant, and of course everyone's shocked, but I'm not, cause I'm trying to figure out who the fuck is the daddy. So then we get Miss Ruby, and oh my gosh, this was so sad to watch because, like, I almost teared the fuck up watching that shit because, you know, she was just, you know, cleaning up the house, trying to close the windows and all the shit, and then this guy comes in out of nowhere, pulling a gun on her, forcing her to take off her clothes so that he can rape her and shit, and I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, poor Ruby. This ain't gonna be good. This ain't gonna be good. And it, and this shit happened right when Derek was moving out with Alex. Damn! Derek and Miss Ruby can never catch no fucking break. Damn! So we end the episode off, you know, with Carlotta chilling in the studio, confessing, you know, how far she's gone and how much, you know, she's going through to keep everything together with, um... You know, her heel spirit and all the other stuff. And I'm saying like, well, oh, well, that's cute. That's cute. I like that. That that was that was nice. But yeah, that was you know, that was Star Episode One, Season Three, Secrets and Lies. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode. Like, do y'all feel like that this season's gonna be I already know the season's gonna be lit. I wanna know who y'all think the daddy is. Leave it on the comments below and let's talk about that shit because I really wanna know because she don't fuck so many niggas. And then, I also want to know, how far do you think that it's going to be before the girls end up, you know, completely snapping? And do you really think that something going to happen between um, Mateo's wife and Simone? Leave it down in the comments and let's talk about that shit because I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about this shit. And I will see y'all next Wednesday, alright? Take care.